specifically that we came into these negotiations understanding that uh, the landscape across the game has changed and that more young players more than ever have, are entering the game and producing at high levels than we've ever seen before. Uh, we, we as players wanted to address that and obviously raise uh, their level of compensation up uh, relative to league revenues um, so that that better reflected that uh, compensation level. And so uh, as we navigated through the process, uh, we still feel that there's uh, dollars to be allocated towards them that would fairly compensate their uh, contributions on the field uh, more so than what's on the table at this point. And, uh, as players, we recognize that and continue to fight for those guys that it's not about Andrew or, or me in the free agent level, that uh, it's us as the, as the free agents looking backwards and realize, realizing that we need to allocate more of those resources to them. It's not just money. The, the, the money can be important in order to have the market operate in a functional way in which we've seen abuses and we've seen uh, you know, trends take advantage of maybe uh, places in which players are not receiving as much as they're uh, contributing, as well as, you know, we have been screaming for years about competition issues, and those are important to us. This is not just about shifting pieces of the pie around. This is about getting the game that we love to work and operate as best as it can and, and go out there and perform and, and let us focus on what we like to do, and that's compete. This can be for, for anyone. Actually, I have two. Uh, Rob said something in his press conference about there being wiggle room. Is that an indication sort of that this wasn't the end point they were going to end at? That's not a great way of phrasing that. Did he indicate that to you or did Dan or whoever indicate that there was wiggle room? Um, hi, Hannah. I, I mean, I, I, it's fair to say that today they were very clear that the last thing they gave us was their best and final offer. They used the words best and final, as Dan did several times. Um, but to be clear, as, as I understood that, that meant best and final before making their decision to announce canceling games. Uh, I, I assume they're not done negotiating. I hope they're not done negotiating. They have a legal obligation to negotiate. Um, so I assume it's not best and final forever, but they were very clear that what they gave us today was best and final for today before making their decision to take down some games. And they've been pretty clear that games that are canceled will not be made up and players will not be paid for that. How do you guys sort of see the schedule factoring into the negotiations going forward? I'll just say that, you know, their decision to say they won't reschedule games if games are canceled or they won't pay players for those games that are canceled is wholly their position. Uh, they're not legally required to take those positions. Uh, it would be our position in the event of games being canceled that as a, a, a feature of any deal for us to come back that we would be asking for compensation or, and or to have those games rescheduled. So again, they're, they're free to take that position. Um, you know, we would have a different position. And of course, last, last year, as I think you know, they actually proposed delaying the season by a month and they actually proposed rescheduling games to get 154 in and to pay players for 162. Uh, for playing 154, so they can they can do it. There's a precedent for it. Uh, to be clear, does that, are you saying you would not agree to a deal that doesn't compensate players for 162 games? Our our position is that if if the league decides unilaterally to pull down games, and then we have a deal that players should get compensated for those games. Um, the the statement today said that. Uh, you guys think that the owners are trying to break the union. And I, I'd love to hear from anybody who wants it, but particularly from Max and Andrew, is there something about the way these negotiations have gone, something you've seen or heard or felt that tells you that? What, where, where is that coming from? Uh, it's not as simple as this negotiation. We've seen free agent markets not operate in, in the way that we uh, expect them to. We've seen uh, parts of the system not function the way they're supposed to. and. You know, the, the tactics that we have seen when it does come to, to sort things out have been, uh, needless to say, frustrating at times. So uh, you start to wonder when you see, you know, obviously COVID was a, a horrible situation for, for everybody in every place, but uh, the return to work, the struggles we had with that. And, you know, when we sit down and, and, and try to lay things out and, and work on the forthcoming CBA and address these issues to have the difficulty in, in getting to the table and, and actually communicating, uh, you start to wonder uh, exactly how you're being looked at by the other side. 
Uh, to echo that, it's more about unifying the union and understanding the uh, desires from everybody in our group and talking to all the guys over here and understanding that we were fighting together as one. We all understood uh, the problems that were within the game that needed to be corrected. Uh, and together, we all together believed in what we were fighting for and all the way to the end here of making sure that everybody understood what we were trying to accomplish and that everybody wanted to accomplish the same goals for everybody. Just real quick, as far as player unity goes and the length of time this could go, are, are there discussions about how long guys are prepared to We're not prepared. play? We're prepared. We've, we've, we've seen this coming in a sense. It's unfortunate, but uh, this, is, uh, this isn't new to us. This is not shocking. It's, again, unfortunate, but our, uh, our communication, our willingness to see each other's point of views and, and to find solutions and to fight for what's right is uh, nothing like I've seen before, I can tell you that. Right, and this has been uh, making in the years uh, of seeing things that have happened over the course, uh, specifically the, of this last CBA, uh, things that have happened to different players that has out, made us outraged in, in certain situations that we absolutely have to have corrections and, and, and that's why uh, we feel necessary to be able to continue this fight. Bruce, you, you said before how you would now, you know, you, you're for pay, back pay, potentially service time now becomes a position that you're going to have to take, but you're now adding more big issues to a long list of issues you already have. So what gives you the confidence that there is a better deal that could come your way? Well, yeah, I think it's like any labor situation. I mean, our whole labor process um, basically plays out this way. We, we have our positions. We feel strongly about them. The players feel strongly about them. We think they're fair. We think they're reasonable. Uh, we believe we've been negotiating good faith from the beginning. Uh, the league obviously has a different view, and this is the way the labor process plays out. Um, the league is attempting, as Tony said, to use its economic weapons, and, and the players, as the guys have said, are, are unified in, in fighting for what's right here. So, um, you know, the, the alternative is to take a deal that that we and the players feel is, is not a fair deal. That's really the only alternative. Uh, either take a deal that the players don't feel is fair or, or, or continue to, to fight. At the end of the day, as you know, it's the league's lockout. They can decide to end it whenever they want. Um, so players really don't have much of a choice in that. But uh, you know, players, as Andrew said, and Max are committed to, to fighting for a deal that they think is fair. And to that point, I'm just curious, at any point during this week, was there ever a conversation about the league lifting the lockout in exchange for some sort of no strike commitment or anything like that? No. All right, well, there you have it. MLBPA and their response to Rob Manfred. The theme, we will keep fighting. This was MLB's final offer, which the players rejected unanimously. 12-team postseason, no changes to CBT threshold. $5 million increase on pre-arbitration bonus pool. Five lottery slots in the draft, and the minimum salary starting at 700000 increasing 10000 each year. We're going to keep you updated on the latest here on HQ as we wait for a resolution for this baseball lockout. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.